Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is farmed seafood. What do they feed farmed seafood and is that a concern? Here's an article from McGill.ca and I will link this in the description below on the YouTube video. Global fish, global shift in farmed fish feed raises new questions. A move toward plant-based fish alters the environmental footprint of farm-raised seafood. And this may also change the levels of healthy fatty acids in these fish. Fish farming industry is increasing its use of plant-based ingredients in its feed and moving away from traditional feed made from fish, which could impact some of the health benefits of eating certain types of seafood, suggests a study from John Hopkins Center. So the traditional way that you raise fish or what's been happening for years is, and this is not with all fish, certain fish like tilapia are a vegetarian, so they're not, uh, they don't eat the same diet that a salmon would eat which is why one of the reasons that a lot of farmers like tilapia because they can grow, they can basically feed them land-based crops. Well, that's all changed in the last 15, 20 years because now all these crops are basically GMOs, GMO so soy and GMO corn. But the traditional way to raise most fish is you actually go to the ocean and you harvest a bunch of seafood, whether it's in a bycatch or whether you're going out there and, and just catching this to make fish meal. Now, for instance, like salmon, it takes three pounds of wild fish to raise one pound of salmon, which doesn't make sense at all, which is why a lot of salmon farms or uh, uh, seafood farms are totally unsustainable or, not, um, or less sustainable than their wild counterparts. Because if salmon were in the ocean, they would be eating a mixture of different things from plankton to krill uh, to whatever is abundant in the ocean as opposed to robbing the natural resources in the form of all protein. And of course fish farming is becoming vastly popular because of the so-called need to feed the planet. So all through China, all through Asia, even through the US and South America, fish farms are spawning everywhere. So a large portion of the seafood consumed in North America is farmed. Fish farming also includes, is also known as aquaculture, not to be confused with agriculture, aquaculture with a Q. It's the fastest growing animal food sector, outpacing beef and poultry industries. While wild fish find their own food, which includes smaller fish for the carnivorous species, plus they also eat things like plankton and other things, intensely farmed fish are fed a manufactured aquaculture feed until recently, this manufactured feed was typically composed of high levels of fish meal derived from wild fish. But it's become unsustainable to catch wild fish to feed the, knowing, to feed the growing numbers of farmed fish. That would be, for example, like raising chickens or taking chickens to feed chickens for less food. So for me, it just doesn't make sense, but that's unfortunately the way the industry works. But the whole... The whole Everything we eat impacts other resources. It's just, you just think, oh, a head of lettuce, you know, what went into a head of lettuce? Well, something went into the head of lettuce, right? The, a certain amount of water went into it. A certain amount of water went in to make a gallon of milk. A certain amount of water went in to make that burger, to make that beef. So there's an impact everywhere down the road. So really the goal of eating sustainable or eating a healthier diet, especially for the planet, is to eat foods that actually take less resources, uh, less of a carbon footprint, that take less of its less resources to get the final product. And of course, beef, chicken, and dairy have to be one of the highest. Beef is known to have anywhere between 2,600 gallons of water to 5,200 gallons of water for one pound of beef. That's two eight ounce hamburgers. So beef is by far the worst as far as sucking other, um, other, other resources. And then when you look at how much grain it takes to make beef, one of the studies I just read said it takes eight pounds or something of grain to make, it was, it was some off ratio worse than seafood. And it's just like, wow. So we took all this water into effect for the beef. We took all this grain into effect just to make one pound. Well, of course the logic is, well, why couldn't we just eat the grain? Well, because that's not where the money is, unfortunately, for these big manufacturers, for these big farms. So what's happening in the seafood industry is that they're, they're growing, they're using agriculture, corn and soy to feed. They think there's less of an impact on that. And there is less of an impact to a certain extent, 
But the biggest problem that they're having is that now, when you say, oh, I want to eat my salmon for omega-3s for these essential fatty acids, or I'm eating this fish for, for these heart-healthy fatty acids, whether it's salmon or another high-fat fish, the salmon does not convert. The fish do not convert on that type of a diet. Okay, totally different type of diet. We get, let's go back to like a cow. A cow gets its calcium in the milk from its diet. Same thing with fish. They get the beneficial oil from what they eat. And if they're not eating the food that they're supposed to be eating, they're not going to do that. So what happens is you now have salmon that have way lower amounts of these essential fatty acids. It's just like grain-fed beef versus grass-fed beef. Grain-fed beef, feedlot beef, has five times less uh, omega-3s than its counterpart uh, grass-fed uh, grass beef. And the same thing's happening in now the salmon and the seafood industry. So you may think that you're eating fish that has these essential fatty acids and they, they, they don't, they flat out don't. And the biggest problem is you have no idea of knowing what they're feeding these fish. It's not like the beef industry yet, where it says this is grass-fed, this is grain-fed. At this point, you have to assume that every piece of seafood you buy that's farm-raised is being supplemented some type of soy or corn. And of course, one of the biggest problems with doing this is the fact that most of these crops are genetically modified. So on top of the less omega-3 essential fatty acids, you're, they're also consuming a large amount of genetically modified organisms, which then, in fact, you are consuming. So what do I suggest for fish? Um, some of you say, well, gee, I don't like wild salmon or wild salmon's too expensive or wild salmon's not available year round. My suggestion is, is you don't need a lot of this to begin with. My suggestion is you, you splurge and buy the wild salmon. Uh, you can now buy it in the frozen section at most grocery stores. A lot of grocery stores have frozen wild salmon that can come in portions. And that is what you're going to keep in your freezer at home. And when you want it, you thaw it and you, you eat less of this, but you're getting more of the beneficial heart healthy fatty acids in that fish. Of course, the real goal is to say, well, I'm just going to eat the plants to begin with and adopt more of a plant based diet, which is a lot of websites out there. And there's a lot of practitioners that have great, um, great books and great websites to help you convert to a plant based diet. And then you can say, well, gee, I'm not going to eat fish four or five days a week anymore. I'm going to eat fish twice a week and you're gonna eat better quality fish, you're gonna understand where it comes from, go to the health food store, or go to a seafood monger who really understands the difference and knows exactly what's going on. But typically, your best bet is to go into a health food store, into a whole foods type store, and in the frozen section, you will see a vast supply of frozen wild salmon and frozen other wild fish. Now, the advantage to using frozen is that it's fresher than fresh. So what happens a lot of times now, but in the past this wasn't true until 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, they're catching these fish knowing that they're going right into the freezer. They catch them and they get frozen within two hours of catching them. They, they go into a, a blast freezer of negative 80. They get cryogenically frozen. The quality is impeccable. Uh, you, can't, you couldn't even tell the difference. Professional chefs cannot tell the difference. Back in 1999 when I was at a sustainable seafood conference at the Culinary Institute of America in Poughkeepsie, they put five pieces of salmon in front of us and everything was labeled one, two, three, four, five. And there were 80 chefs in the room and we all tasted all these salmons. And we were then asked a series of questions. Which one do you think is fresh? Which one do you think is frozen? Which one do you think is wild? Which one do you think is farm? This, 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 this. Over 80% of the chefs in that room chose the frozen king salmon as by far the best quality and i was like wow this there's no way this is frozen right there's no no way and i gotta tell you i was shocked and so were all the other chefs in that room were totally blown away when they revealed what each number was probably the least uh fresh tasting fish or the least fish was the actual one that had never been frozen and that's because by the time you catch the fish ship it process it get it to the wholesaler across the country however it's getting there whether it's getting trucked or shipped or air freighted then it goes into that warehouse and the salesman has to sell it and by the time it gets to the restaurant and it sits at the restaurant for two three four five days you're talking a fish that's 10 to 15 days old which at that point it's had a large amount of time to start decomposing 
okay? So really fresh, people think, oh, the fish has never been frozen, it must be fresh. Fresh doesn't really mean that it's fresh. Frozen within two hours and you thawing it before, and the fish has never hit rigor mortis, that is fresh. So go, I, trust me, go into the, go into the uh, frozen food section and look for high quality frozen seafood. You can also look for frozen at sea or frozen on shore, FOS or FAS. That means that the fish is being frozen in a very timely fashion, that they understand that, hey, time is an essence, catch it, freeze it, process it, and go. So, and honestly, wild salmon is only in season for a couple of months. Albacore tuna on the Pacific Northwest is only in season for six weeks. So, and you see a lot of restaurants that have these supplies year round, and that's how they do it. Sushi restaurants that are serving this albacore tuna, that's how it's being done, unless you're buying albacore tuna from somewhere else. But what we use at my restaurant is a sashimi grade albacore tuna that's pole caught, line caught in the Pacific Northwest, six week season, that's it. They're frozen on, processed on the boat while the boat is on the water still, frozen at sea. So hopefully this helped you decipher wild seafood versus farm seafood. And I'm not saying all farm seafood is bad, some farm seafood is great, but what I am saying is that if the fish is wild, it's going to eat more of its own natural diet. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.